This is the Scoop for Tuesday. I'm Josh Holton with the WMNF News Headlines. Sarasota police have obtained a third warrant in their investigation into Florida GOP chair Christian Ziegler, who was accused of rape and has refused to step down from his position. That's according to a tweet this morning by Zach Anderson. The tweet states that the search warrant affidavit says there's probable cause to believe Ziegler also committed video voyeurism. Ziegler had attempted an extramarital three-way sexual affair involving his wife, Bridget Ziegler, and the accuser said she would only participate in that with Bridget's participation. Christian allegedly disregarded the stipulation and proceeded to initiate sex anyway at the accuser's home. His uh, wife, Bridget, has also co-founded extremist group Moms for Liberty and claims to have helped author the law known by critics Don't Say Gay. She was also formally asked to resign from the Sarasota School Board. Bridget has refused to step down from that role, and Christian has also flouted calls to step down even from Governor Ron DeSantis. A Senate Republican this week proposed preventing local governments from regulating electric vehicle charging stations. Republican Senate Agricultural Chairman Jay Collins of Tampa included the prohibition in a bill that includes a wide range of issues related to the Florida Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services. Under the proposal, regulation of electric vehicle charging stations will be controlled by the state, what is known as a preemption of local authority. Under the law, the Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services oversees things such as requirements for posting prices at charging stations. Collins' bill is filed for the legislative session that will start January 9th. After a similar proposal was filed in the House, a Senate Republican this week proposed a bill that would restrict the types of flags that can be flown by local governments, schools, and colleges, including possibly preventing LGBTQ pride flags. Republican Senator Jonathan Martin of Fort Myers filed the bill, Senate Bill 1120, for consideration during the legislative session that will start January 9th. Under it, government agencies could not display a flag that represents a political viewpoint, including but not limited to a politically partisan, racial, sexual orientation, and gender, or political ideology viewpoint. Republican Representative David Borrero of Sweetwater filed a similar bill, HB 901, on December 18th. Equality Florida, an LGBTQ advocacy organization, criticized Borrero's bill on Twitter saying, quote, if conservative lawmakers won't stop trying to erase us, we won't stop showing up to oppose them, unquote. Conservationists are celebrating the recent find of two federally threatened snake hatchlings out in the wild. In Liberty County's Apalachicola Bluffs and Ravines Preserve, that's good news, suggesting a species reintroduction program based at Central Florida Zoo and Botanical Gardens is working, as WMFE's Molly Durig explains. The two hatchlings spotted earlier this month are eastern indigo snakes, a federally threatened species wildlife experts in Florida are working to recover. The Nature Conservancy says it's the first discovery in seven years of eastern indigo snakes born in the wild, marking a milestone for a species reintroduction program based at the Central Florida Zoo and Botanical Gardens Orion Center for Indigo Conservation. Field biologist Michelle Hoffman, who works for the Orion Center, says the eastern indigo snake plays an important ecosystem regulator role. It eats other animals, but is harmless to humans. They're big and very impressive. So somebody, if they saw one, might be a little intimidated, um, you know, at first glance if they don't know what they're looking at. But they are very gentle um, and docile snakes. Hoffman says Indigo snakes are commensals for gopher tortoises, meaning the two species generally coexist without harming each other. In Orlando, I'm Molly Durig. The Israeli military has confirmed it's pulling thousands of troops out of the Gaza Strip. The move over the next several weeks could set the stage for a new long-term phase of lower-intensity fighting against the Hamas militant group. Israel has been under pressure from its chief ally, the United States, to change tack in an offensive that has led to the deaths of nearly 22,000 Palestinians. But Israeli forces continued yesterday to bear down on parts of Gaza. An Associated Press reporter saw at least 17 dead, including children, from a missile strike on a house in central Gaza. For the weather, it will be cool and partly cloudy today in the Tampa Bay area. Highs in the mid-60s. Lows tonight will be in the upper 40s. Tomorrow will be mostly cloudy with highs around 70. I'm Josh Holton with the WMNF News Headlines on 88.5 FM and the WMNF app. This is The Scoop, recorded at WMNF Tampa.